All right, this is a psychic reading for Jordan Maxwell. If you don't know who Jordan Maxwell is, he is a conspiracy theorist, and he's kind of, um, he's like a classic kind of older conspiracy theorist. Um, yeah, he basically has his feet in almost just about every type of conspiracy theory there is. I mean, like, as far as, like, you know, the most common ones. He's uh, anti-communist, um, talks about aliens and whatnot. He briefly talks about reptilians, stuff like that. Um, you know, he had to do, or he was a big part behind... Uh, conspiracy theory movie, I can't remember what it's called right now, but, oh, Zeitgeist, that's what it was called, yeah, um, it talks about religion, specifically, and how symbols are all interrelated, and how words are interrelated, and how our legal system comes from, um, Rome and how there's all these words we use like the currency like the current like the ocean and how it all goes back to like trading through boats and how all these words have different double meanings and whatnot so it's interesting stuff anyways um and it gets pretty out there so I'm gonna go ahead and see what comes up for him it's gonna go ahead and take a moment to Get settled, get grounded, get my energy running again. When I tap into Jordan Maxwell, I see him, I see his vibration at a, like a pink kind of color. I'm going to match to that. So the first thing I'm saying is I'm seeing him eating a piece of broccoli. Um, of course, I see things symbolically. Clear some more energy really quick. And so I'm going to see what does this broccoli represent. So this broccoli represents mundane at tea, like the mundane kind of very structured, orderly lifestyle. Um, it's kind of the opposite of what I think of when I think of him. Let's see, what does this mean? Oh, okay. So I'm not actually seeing him eating it. I just assumed he was eating it because he was holding it in front of his face. But I'm actually seeing him analyzing it, like studying it, and taking notes. And... Um, and he puts it down, and he picks something else up, and so he's so he's actually really looking at the details of what this is. Um, so he's taking these mundane things and comparing them. It looks like he's finding all these different things about them and connecting dots, so to speak. So this makes sense. Let me see. What is the what is the message? Beyond the obvious within this, let me ask and see what comes up. See him turn around, and there's someone or something behind him. I'm seeing it initially as a giant mountain, but I think this is a. This is something more than that. This is. This is like a. 
is a person or being These are energies. These are like guides. But I don't know that they're the best guides. I'm not getting the sense that they're like great guides. Like you can have guides. And guides aren't always good guides. I mean, there are all sorts of guides. Just because you have a guide doesn't mean it's, you know, your angel or something. Um, let's see. What's going on here? I'm getting that this has to do with past lives. Like, this is some energy, some spiritual being that has been with him before he incarnated into his current life. And there's a bit of revenge here. There's, like, wanting to get back at something. Or not so much revenge, but, like, wanting to... Yeah, like kind of get back at some someone or something. <clears throat> Let's see, what is this about? This is about disliking an organization of some sort. And this has to do with the church or churches or buildings like that, something, something like that. What is this? Places of worship of some sort. I'm seeing like the pagan symbol, um, but I don't think that's what, I, I'm not getting that that's exactly what this is against. This is more like, kind of like a bunch of religions all kind of mixed together. It's a kind of sharing, like a everything mixed. Um, let's see. It has to do with the past life where things are very rough for him. And um, there's a lot of like people being like playing around and like goofing off and, and not really, but in a way where they're not respecting other people and they're taking advantage of other people. And it was like a corrupt system. And this has like way, way, way back and like you know, <clears throat> I don't know, kings and queens era. And um, People were not treated respectfully. And so there's this energy that's following him in his present life that he was somehow affiliated with in that past life way back that wants him to kind of do something about this, even though it's kind of like old, outdated information. It's not really what's going on in the world anymore, but it's kind of like seeing it through the lens of, of what was going on in the past. And so it's kind of bringing him to these conclusions of, um, like, those injustices, like, seeing through the lens of that, kind of projecting that onto the world now. And, you know, like, what I hear, at least, is that our time, our sense of time in bodies is, like, much slower than like, on the spirit realm and whatnot, so, like, you know, um, it's, it's not like this energy has aged to our present timing as we have in our bodies, so it's kind of, like, a little outdated, um, in the sense that it's, um, you know, fixated on things from the past and not, um, up to present time. So let me see, how is this, what does this have to do with his work? So he has, he's getting lots of, like, intuitive information, you know, just guided towards these things. 
to really connect these very ancient symbols and understandings um, like studying really like the past basically um, and it's like he's trying to solve something let me see what does this being want from him like to to kill the king or something like that like get rid of the king the kingdom like it's corrupt um and it's like that's kind of being projected onto modern day and i'm seeing obama showing up for some reason like maybe that was projected onto obama in some manner, yeah, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing Obama with a crown, like he was, it was being projected onto him. Um, okay. Um, let's see what else. I'm gonna see what, what his spiritual truth is. Regardless of this other being, I'm just gonna clear that out from my reading. I don't want that to interrupt this. This isn't about him, her, that, him, that being. Um, so Jordan Maxwell seems like he's trying to um, like find himself, find who he really is. It looks like there's all these ideas, ideologies, and whatnot that he's following, and he's kind of scatterbrained about it on some level. And it's like he, his, his spirit is, is wanting him to, like, really figure himself out more. Like, he's really caught up in these, you know, external understandings of the world around him. Um, and like he's, his, it's almost like his identity is, is not within himself. If that makes any sense, like it's kind of like an abstract idea about things he stands for, but it's not so much like within himself in present time. I guess you could say. I see him kind of looking around, like he's almost like, like oh, like kind of like he's just energetically like feeling like that if that makes any sense um trying to figure out where he stands let's see what does this have to do with his theories i see him rising to the top of something like he's rising up like uh like rising up the hierarchy um it's like he's rising up this, what I'm seeing is like a, kind of like a pyramid sort of thing. Um, and what he's doing is he's taking these opinions and they're kind of inflating him to the, to like make him float um, to the top. And he's becoming more scholarly as he does this, although these aren't just opinions. So these are opinions that he's borrowing. These are opinions, sorry. These are opinions that he's borrowing from other people, like other authors. And it's like he's able to really connect in with what all these other people have said and kind of like rise to the top with those things. Um, but they're not really like his things, if that makes any sense. Okay, so this has gone on long enough, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to, like, what about his teachings? What about the stuff he says? Obviously, the stuff from the past is showing up, you know, like, finding number codings and, like, connecting, you know, like, numbers and... I just see him like connecting numbers up with things in books and it meaning things to him and 
not kind of obvious. So what does this mean? So there's a lot of um, influence over him that's not like him, if that makes sense, like other energies that are kind of like guiding him, but they're not necessarily like working for him in his best favor necessarily. almost like he's possessed, not possessed, that's that's an extreme word, but it's almost like he's, inf oh, maybe possessed, influenced by all these, like, energies from, like, way, way back in history that are kind of guiding him to, um, like, expose these things from the past. These look like they're more philosophical in nature than than anything else. And it's very ideological. But it's all like so outdated on some level. It's just like these energies from way back when that want to be proven, they want to be, you know, they want justice, basically, but it's like the world is so far from that, it's um, kind of just not really even relevant, if that makes any sense. I'm not saying his work isn't relevant. I'm just saying these energies that are kind of working through him. So there's a lot. It's kind of hard to read anything because that's just what comes up over and over. So I'm going to really try and see beyond all these other influences and see, like, really, what is his work about? What is his work really like? I'm just seeing him teaching someone from many different books, and it's like he's combining philosophies, combining different works. And he's just connecting all these different things up. It's almost like he's taking all these different stories and he's making them all into one giant story. <clears throat> what is this spiritual truth? I was thinking his mind is like his mind is running on caffeine. <laughs> and his body is kind of just like, bleh, if that makes any sense. Like a cherry. I don't know. That's the way I'm seeing it. I don't know if that makes any sense to you when I'm describing it. But that's the way I'm seeing it. It's like he turned into like a cherry pie or something. <laughs> um, his body did. But his mind is like on caffeine. So there's like this division. Let me see more about what that's about. This is a part of him that has kind of left. Or it's been, it's been like kind of. like put down on in some level it looks like 
in his past as a kid and um like he carries that energy with him that kind of brings him down and then his uh his mind kind of separates from that and kind of does the opposite so it's kind of created this schism um Again, back to the work. What does this have to do with his work? I'm getting that his, his work is 49% relevant to like what's really going on in the world. Which, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Because it's, you know... I don't know if anything is really 100% relevant. I don't know. That's just what I'm saying for this. <clears throat> um, so it looks like there's definitely some, some interesting stuff in his work. A lot of it is very, like, in the head, so to speak. Um... Let's see, how does this affect people's lives in reality? It's kind of like a novel, like you read a book to lose yourself to it, to kind of like go somewhere else, so to speak. So it's kind of... But it's interesting because I'm seeing it, it's like a, it's like a story that's like up in the clouds. It's like imaginary, I guess you could call it. And then, it, but it also comes down and connects, like here and there, with like real things, and it does look like it connects down into politics. I'm seeing it connecting down into politics, and um, like real things, like scholarly aspects as well. Definitely connecting down into that. It's so like these are the like real practical uses of it, of his knowledge. Let me see, how would this work in politics? I'm going to hone in on that. So I'm seeing like what looks like the commandment, but I know this isn't like literally that. It's kind of more like the rules. And so it looks like he... Let me see, what does this mean? It looks like there's a lot of like almost like backdoor loops in the law and um like kind of like things that like were like how the system is built, how it's structured and how there are these ways of manipulating it because of how it's structured. Looks like he is very he's very practical in that manner. I'll look at more like specifically like his conspiracy theories and how those relate to reality. I'm seeing him as like an old man telling a story, like to a to a kid or like children or whatever, you know? Or not necessarily children. I'm just seeing him telling a story like an old man, kind of. And it's like it's fascinating to people. And they can learn, people can learn life lessons from what he's teaching. But again, it's like they're kind of like out of date as to like exactly everything present going on in the world. I know he has a lot of stuff to say about like what's going on in the world presently, so I'm going to look at more of that specifically now. So I'm seeing him with a candy cane, and it's like he's talking to these kids. And it's, let me see what this represents with this candy cane. It's 
looks like a way to get them hooked into his story. <laughs> um, and he walks away. So this is really about ideology is what's really important to him. Let's see how this relates to the present moment. Seeing an earthquake explode, I mean, a volcano exploding. And I see him like talking over it, kind of. He's just kind of like talking and talking and talking, and kind of in the background, this volcano is exploding. I'm getting that some of what he's talking about is happening, and it's like as this volcano is exploding, he's kind of like, yeah, see, like I told you, like this is what's going on, blah, 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 blah. And like he's just kind of like, yeah, this is exactly what I was saying. But there's also this sense that it's not exactly like the way he's, like he's kind of adding stuff in is what I'm getting. But that he is on... He's actually, you know, he's describing what's going on, but he's adding his uh, his own ideology into the story to kind of narrate it through that lens is what I'm getting. And there are things that he's kind of not seeing that are going on because he's too busy talking. <laughs> um, but regardless, he is kind of predicting these things before they happen, is what I'm saying. Like, he's, he's seeing the basic, like, kind of graph of, like, how things are going. But, um, He's attaching a perspective onto it that isn't entirely grounded in reality is what I'm getting about it. Let's see a little bit more about what specifically this is that's not true that he teaches. So I'm seeing people in boots and it's like military and tanks, and it's like, um, they're like invading people, shooting people, they have a star tattoo, it's funny because it's a, it's a star which I would think would be communist, but I'm seeing it made out of the American flag, and it's like tattooed on their ankle, so I don't know exactly what this means. It's almost like it's become like the American, like almost like the American Communist Party, <laughs> if that is a thing. Um, and it's like they're just shooting people. So I'm seeing this as like the, the false narrative that's not true that he's talking about. And like people, I'm seeing these military men just like drinking liquor and just like throwing the bottle and just like killing people. <laughs> like families, like just everyone. Minorities, especially I'm seeing. But not just minorities, just everyone. So I'm going to see what is true that he teaches. What is What is true that he teaches? So I'm seeing a lot of like metaphysical stuff going on here. Like
like there's a lot of spiritual aspects that I that it looks like there's a lot of truth to. I'm also seeing the planet and it's like there's like prison bars across it, but then there's like also water like coming and like like rinsing it clean and cleaning the earth, obviously symbolically. Um, so I don't know if he talks about something like that happening, but it's like... trying to see what does this have to do with what he teaches, the truth of what he's teaching or telling people I'm seeing Obama seeing Obama with like this, it's like a, coming across as a duck toy, which I don't know what it, symbolizes good things is what I'm getting, but he's like squeaking it and everybody laughs and claps and cheers, um, trying to understand what this means. It was like a unison of like other militaries kind of coming together. It looks like like I'm seeing I'm like waving like come on, and then there's like other tanks and militaries kind of coming to join the party. Um, Seeing this could lead towards tyranny in the future. Like, I don't know why I'm saying like Hitler. As water, I thought it was cleaning the planet. I'm actually seeing it as, like, kind of spinning people around and confusing them. Making people sort of disoriented. But it is cleaning at the same time. It's like cleaning the old things out, but it's replacing people, like, kind of in this, like, dizzy, spinning, kind of confused state. Um... And he's just kind of like, he's just like, yeah, I told you this would happen. <laughs> it's, um, I'm seeing tanks firing at America. Um, other country, like uh, Middle Eastern. So this is all stuff that is true that he's teaching or talking about. Basically, just like the whole like 
if you want to call it world government, but or you could just say it's just the the combining of lots of governments and like the the world economy and all that. Looks like that has a lot a lot of truth to it. So so that's what I'm saying for for Jordan Maxwell and, and his truths and what he's speaking that is true. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this reading. Okay, thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, or give it a thumbs up. Um, check out my other videos. Have a good one.